Nobody has more respect for women than I do. Nobody. Hillary Clinton wants to abolish it, believe me. She wants to abolish our Second Amendment. I think they didn't deny it. I don't think anybody denied it. Other presidents did not call, did write letters, and some presidents didn't do anything. Many people have come out and said I'm right. You really do have to ask yourself, where does it stop? Hello and welcome to Fallacious Trump, the podcast where we use the insane ramblings of the wind beneath right wing to explain logical fallacies. I'm your host, Jim. And I'm your other host, Mark. A logical fallacy is an error in reasoning that results in bad or invalid arguments. And the logical fallacy we're looking at this week is the fallacy of worse evil, also known as resort to Pollyanna or relative privation. (laughs) Resort to Pollyanna. (laughs) Or relative privation. So, yeah, the fallacy of worse evil, I think of this as kind of like a reverse nirvana fallacy. Mm. The nirvana fallacy we talked about before, and it's where a solution to something isn't acceptable if it isn't perfect, basically. Yeah. And in this one, it's that something isn't, isn't that bad or isn't a problem if it isn't the worst possible thing. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. So th- this is it's fine because it's not as bad as it could have been. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. there are there are theoretical possible worst scenarios. So why are we even bothering? Why are, even, why are we worried? Why are you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Same kind of feeling as the as the Nirvana fantasy. Mm. And so our first example, unsurprisingly, is about COVID. Yeah. And it's it's uh, Trump's one of Trump's uh, attempts at saying it's like you know it could have been a lot worse basically. If we didn't do it properly and do it right. You'd have two and a half million deaths. If you take a look at uh, alternatives, you could have two and a half million deaths or something thereabouts. You could have a number that would be substantially more. So he's claiming that because he, he's done such a brilliant job <laughs> yeah. that only now 600,000 Americans have died. At the time, this was, I think, September, so it was about 250,000. Could have been a lot worse. He says it could have been two and a half million. The absolute worst possible case scenario from Imperial College in at the very beginning of this, yeah. where they looked at what would happen if not just no government did anything at all, yeah. but nobody did anything. Like nobody right. socially distanced, wore, wore masks, washed their hands more yeah. or anything at all like yeah. nobody cared they just sneezed in each other's faces they said and and no government did anything no borders were shut down uh, you know everyone just carried on as if it didn't exist yeah then um up to 2.2 million people could die in the u.s right. so so he's saying uh, we, you know if we didn't do such a great job it could have been two and a yeah, half, half million, million. yeah, yeah. <laughs> or thereabouts so i guess that's if you're going to um incite the 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 worst possible scenario, then you've got to choose the absolute worst possible yeah, scenario in like order worse to, than the yeah, worst possible yeah, one in this in case. order to make <laughs> your feeble attempt um, look look really good, and yeah. then people will go well thank God for you, yeah absolutely we've yeah. only got six hundred thousand dead, you know what's it what I think the the figures in the UK are more than the death toll of the British in the First World War, have died in England yeah. or the British Isles of COVID. Yeah. I heard today, I think, is, um, I, I, I don't think this is necessarily the most up-to-date figure, but I, I heard today it's about one in 500 people in the UK. Oh, man. I know. Which is fucking absurd yeah. that that number of people have died. It's yeah. insane. And actually, the, 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 I will get on to that in more detail later on, yeah. but the... But the the thing is that they're relying on the vaccines, and I think this has become kind of public health policy in most of the populist government countries, um, <laughs> is that the vaccine will solve the problem. That's become the the fallacy of the worst evil. They're going, look, without the vaccine, it could have been a lot worse. So you'll kind of forgive us all of that because we've got the vaccine. So they're pursuing it with, you know, utmost... Um, zeal to get everyone vaccinated and people are starting to go well hang on a minute what if we don't get vaccinated or so I've got a a friend who's trying to get back to Australia can't get a vaccine because she's too young so the Australian government won't let her in so because she's not vaccinated so you think well hang on a minute I want to get back for a wedding so how how's that gonna happen so yeah there we go so the yeah yeah 
fella said the worst <laughs> evil. But despite the fact that we've got vaccines, more vaccines than anywhere else in the world, is still one in 500 are dead. Go figure. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, a lot of that happened before the vaccinations. Cause, True. Yeah. 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 We, we, yeah. we got a head start on it, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Still, our second been worse. Trump example <laughs> been worse. Yeah. is from when uh, one of the times that Russia hacked stuff right. and and, right. um, and yeah. reporters were asking Trump what he was going to do about it. Yeah. And of course, uh, he did not have bad things to say about Russia. Uh, it is interesting that everybody's always mentioning Russia. And uh, I don't mind you mentioning Russia, but I think probably China at this point is... Uh, is uh, a nation that you should be talking about much more so than Russia, because the things that China is doing are far worse. Yeah. So yeah. don't worry about Russia. Russia's not important. No. China China's is much worse. Much worse. <laughs> and then he goes on to cite the virus. Yeah, absolutely. So because you know, so human Russia isn't... rights abuses. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So because Russia isn't the worst country in terms of like being vaguely related to recent deaths. Yeah. Therefore, it's not even worth talking. You shouldn't no. really ask me questions no. about. And that, and that, about yeah, Russia. and that I guess part of the thing about using this fallacy is you've got to skip over all of those things that are similar or that <laughs> are the same. You know, don't mention the human rights abuses because those happen in Russia as well. <laughs> um, and so we just find the one thing that that they're worse at. And then that yeah. we can take a step back and go, well, okay, they're not that bad. Bec- they're not that bad because they don't do that particular thing that these guys do. And, and we all agree that that's a bad thing. So, yeah, it's the, yeah, let's, let's all, and he kind of, it doesn't make them shine. You, know? you, know, <laughs> you wouldn't choose Russia as a result of that. I guess, you know, it's the, the lesser of two evils, still an evil. Yeah, yeah, mm. that's not really stated in in most of these. They no. do. It is more of a kind of distraction tactic. Look over there; they're much worse. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, and it's in fact, that, isn't it? that, that's uh, how our third example uses it. This is Louis Goma, uh, who was talking about the insurrection, and uh, he was he started by talking about how nine eleven and Pearl Harbor were really bad. Right. <laughs> and then said this. You know, I just want the president to understand there have been things worse than people without any firearms coming into a building. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There have been things worse than people hey, without any firearms coming into a building. Yeah. Yeah. But then there have been people coming into a building since buildings were invented <laughs> and before firearms were invented who didn't do what they did. Yeah. yeah. You don't need to. And people who came into buildings before firearms and then chopped the head off Thomas a Beckett, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, <laughs> there have been things worse than that is so, so good, isn't it? And it, that's yeah. the equivalent of some people did something. It's a bit it like very that. Much it? It's is, kind yeah. of an accent. It really fantasy, is. Isn't it? Yeah, it's it's. Yeah, he is. He's minimising it as much as he possibly can. Yeah, all by 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 lying partly because firearms yeah. <laughs> were found on some of the people when they were arrested. Yeah. Um. But but yeah, just saying it's just it's just people coming into a building. It's not the worst thing ever. <laughs> there have been much worse things happen. So yeah, yeah, yeah. he's it's it's completely dismissing it by saying <laughs> this this isn't the worst thing. There have been worse things that have happened. So therefore, we don't need to Worry look about into this it. Particular or, thing. Yeah. yeah, and Goma yeah. is one of the ones who has repeatedly and still is saying, you know, this was um, the left trying to make Trump look bad. Okay. Um, and yet is absolutely against the commission to look into yeah. what went on. Yes, exactly. Which you'd yeah. think, if he... If he was exonerated. being genuine, yeah, 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 he would he would want it looked into since it was the liberal scumbag who did it. Yeah, so. because all you're going to find is a whole bunch of antifas dressing up as insurrectionists, uh-huh. um, and yeah, that will be revealed. But yeah, there's some something is a somewhat mm. of a mismatch it's there. Almost like he doesn't really believe what he's saying. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> almost. Still, could be worse. <laughs> And now is the time, I think, for Marx British politics. Corner. So actually, yeah, as, as we kind of 
um, spoken about it before. There's this feeling that the British government has been running entirely on the basis of give us a break, it could have been worse. But the problem is, so it was very difficult to find an example in the British government of that currently because we know that it couldn't have been worse. <laughs> no one except for Matt, Matt Hancock, who kind of insisted that we give him a break in, in February this year. We played this before, but it is worth another listen, <laughs> especially as the refutation of the conclusion that it could, be, could have been worse simply point out that it couldn't by showing how bad it actually is. It's done perfectly by Piers Morgan. Because I think we should be on this programme thanking my team. You know, they worked really? so hard. Really? And the, yeah. Well, let's yes. just analyse that, shall we? Reason, we have the, the we have is, Your team, I'm sorry, if you want to play that game with us, your team, and the second reason you and your that, team like, have presided over a woeful handling of this pandemic that has led to us having the worst death toll in Europe, 130,000 people dead. So I'm sorry if my first thought when you come on, Health Secretary, is not to thank you and your team for your brilliant handling of the pandemic, because I don't think 130,000 deaths shows that you've handled it well. And I'm sorry I'm not thanking you and applauding you. Yeah, I, I hate agreeing with Piers Morgan. I know. But... <laughs> I know. And actually, I kind of... You know, apart from the fact that he's an ass and he was an idiot and walked, you know, walked off in a huff from his show, he was, was at the time pretty much maybe one of two people holding the government to account and not taking the bullshit and not being bullied by, you know, Matt Hancock kind of tries to go, you know, you're, you should be thanking me, you should be praising me for doing such a good job. And he kind of... It, and, and Morgan points out, he says, well, you know, I, excuse me, like 130,000 dead isn't terribly handled very well. And, you know, so forgive me for not praising you because it couldn't be worse. That's the thing. So uh, Matt Hancock hasn't used that ever since. You know, I think he rose the day when he did. <laughs> but, uh, but there's this kind of, there is this, this notion that, hey, give us a break. It could have been worse. You should thank us for what we've done kind of pervades this entire thing and that's and it's all a front and it's and it's without any basis in fact so meanwhile on good morning scotland yes there is one um on the 8th of january dave caesar there's a name to conjure with who was the interim deputy chief medical officer i used to i ran a um you would, probably won't be surprised i did write a satirical school magazine <laughs> <laughs> At school, it was a kind of no. a, a piss take of the uh, piss take of the school magazine, and we had this ongoing gag that the the guy that wrote the kind of editorial byline was the ace reporter, and he and he got killed at the end of each each time he did the editorial. So we ended up with you know the stand in stand in deputy interim ace reporter. So as soon as I read that uh, Dave Caesar was the interim deputy chief medical officer. Uh, maybe laugh. So he actually did say it could have been worse. And I've not been able to find a recording on the web, all those links to it that tantalizingly pop up in the search engine. When you go to the page, there's no web, there's no link to it. And um, I just can't get all the thing. But he actually did say um, our case numbers are high. They're not as high as they could have been if we hadn't taken the measures that we undertook from Boxing Day. I hate to say it, but it could have been worse by this time in January. We're not out of the woods yet by any stretch of the imagination, but I suppose we're holding our own in a very significantly challenging, in very significantly challenging circumstances. So you, you can imagine when well, he hasn't been wheeled out at any of Nicola Sturgeon's things since, um, weirdly. And you kind of, I don't know, I'm, here, I'm reading this thing and you're going, no, I hate to say it. Well, don't say it. I hate to say <laughs> it. It could have been worse by this time of January. Well, that's a great comfort to all those people that have died in that time. You know, where the, it could, there could have been that many more. Well, I've only got one grandparent left. You know, I only had one grandfather on my mother's side and he's gone. I could have had four or five of my grandparents go, you know, six, 16 is, of them. It is such a desperate tactic this isn't it because mm. it's not i don't know maybe it's us but it's not convincing at all no it doesn't in any way 
make you feel sympathetic for them, which I, which seems yeah. to be what they're going for. Yeah, yeah. Is is when they're like, I, you know, why are you attacking me? I've, yeah. I, I've done better than nothing. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, if I'd have done nothing, is that what you want? Because that's what I could have done, <laughs> but I didn't, and yet you're not thanking me for it. Yeah, it's a very, but and it's. And the, yeah, the only the way and the the way to simply refute that is to say, well, no, forgive me, but <laughs> you know, you could have done better. It, and, it, I, and, it, and in Trump's case, nothing probably would have been better. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yes, you know. Well, well, I guess we had the added advantage that several people died of bleach ingestion <laughs> or sticking UV lights up their asses. Yeah, you know, uh, two or three fewer. Republican voters, yeah. So, and and the interesting thing about Dave Caesar is that he's still surprisingly the deputy to the chief medical officer, Gregor Smith, who became the interim chief medical officer when the previous chief medical officer quit because she broke the lockdown rules in December to 2020 in travelling to see family. Familiar? Well, <laughs> the, our second example is... Our famous uh, guy who broke lockdown rules, visiting family, Dominic Cummings, who appeared before a government select committee uh, in May. And the government, the select committee was looking into coronavirus lessons learned. And he was asked by Aaron Bell, Tory MP for Newcastle under Lyme, this question. What was your actual motivation in working for the Prime Minister? Was it to get your ideas into government? The fact that Covid derailed that, is that a source of regret to you? In summer 2019, it seemed to me that the choice the country faced was either sort out a once a century constitutional crisis, respect the referendum and have the country move on with a new agenda, or have Jeremy Corbyn and a second referendum, which I thought would be absolutely catastrophic for, mm. for the country. One way in which this could have been even worse than it was, if you imagine that parliament of 2019, mm. that hung parliament, colliding with this disaster in January 2020, God only knows what would have happened, at least here, if that broken parliament had limped on into 2020 and confronted mm. this crisis, I think that we'd be now be looking at. I think, frankly, I think the whole system would have, would have melted down and fallen apart. Yeah, if there's one thing worse, it was that that parliament of 2019 colliding with this, God knows what would have happened. And then he trails off when he goes, <laughs> at least here, because there's yeah. nothing. Yeah, because there's for nothing him to say. To say. <laughs> no. And then he goes, if that had happened, it would have been worse. The whole system would have melted down and fallen apart. As opposed, As opposed to, to what? what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, uh, this, what, the, what system? The system whereby a government can divert £37 billion pounds to their mates for a track and trace system that still doesn't work and hasn't appeared. Where's that money gone? That's the system that would have fallen apart because there would have been some sense of accountability, you know, yeah. on the part of a socialist government or on the part of a hung parliament that would have been working across the aisles because they would have not had um, a governing majority. They would have had to have had everything agreed at every stage in order to progress, whereas... A government with an enormous majority could do what the fuck it likes with no accountability. You know, yeah, because we don't want that system to fail because yeah. where would Boris be now? And It's you know, really it's really bad trying to use this in a situation yes, where actually it couldn't really be worse. No, no, that's, yes, that is the problem, <laughs> you know, and yeah. part of the the situation being as bad as it actually is right now is down in no small part to Cummings, you know, and it's yeah. a bit disingenuous of him saying a constitutional crisis. He brought about several of the constitutional <laughs> crises, you know, proroguing parliament and all that stuff, the heady days of proroguing parliament. <laughs> yeah, all that, all that stuff, yeah. I admit I'm getting better, better. at spotting fallacies in the wild. It's getting better, better at spotting fallacies. Finding him in the wild, doubting 
stops for passing Till the world's getting better all the time Palestines, Palestines, Palestines It's getting better all the time The Beatles there with uh, Getting Better, which includes the the fabulously episodic line, can't get no worse. <laughs> so, yeah. Excellent. So in The Fallacy in the Wild, we like to talk about the fallacy of the week from a non-political perspective. And our first example this week comes from 30 Rock. Uh, this is from a first season episode where uh, Jack is curious how Kenneth stays so cheerful all the time. How do you do it, Kenneth? How do you sit here every day taking crap from people and you keep smiling? My mother always told me that even when things seem bad, there's someone else who's having a worse day, like being stung by a bee or getting a splinter or being chained to a wall in someone's sex dungeon. <laughs> so, which, yeah. which, which is just the three examples that my mother always said to me. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Kenneth's uh, Kenneth's cheerfulness comes from the fact that that it could be worse. Yeah. So and actually being, so... And being <laughs> actually being hung chained to a wall in someone's sex dungeon makes me think of Michael Palin in Life of Brian <laughs> when he's uh, when he's going yeah nice one Centurion they only only hung, hung me up the right way last week yeah you know, <laughs> bloody favoritism is that, is that, yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. so. Um, yeah, so Kenneth is is cheerful because it's not as bad as it could possibly be. be. Yeah, for him, yeah. somebody somewhere. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and a, a similar ethos. Yeah, uh, is is evinced in the Tim Minchin song. Some people Yay. have it worse than I. Yeah, um, yeah. In which this is part of of one of the choruses. My life is pretty shit, but I know I shouldn't whinge about it. I could be a Palestinian driving buses on the Gaza Strip. Yeah, how bad can I be? Some people have it worse than me. I could be an Ipswich prostitute or Gary Glitter's family. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, the song starts off saying, oh, my life's really shit. Um, yeah. But, but, so but yeah, the whole, yeah. The, the whole point of the song is, but, you know, I can't really complain because some people have worse lives than me. Yeah. So could be a Palestinian living on the Gaza Strip. Yeah. yeah. It's very timely. Yes. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And this was like 2008, I think that was. Yeah. That's from his live show, So Fucking Rock, which I <laughs> strongly recommend. Yeah. It does indeed rock. <laughs> yes, okay, if that makes you feel better about your life, great that some people have it worse. But the point is, it's not really about misery poker. Right. It's not a, yeah. a, a competition between who has a worse life. And therefore, if you don't have as bad a life as someone else you don't have any right to complain or feel bad about yourself or wish things were better. Um, it's, you know, it, people have the right to feel <laughs> how they feel about something without sometimes being told by someone else, well, you know, what are you worried about? Other people have things worse, yeah. as was the case in our third example, <laughs> yeah. which uh, is, is I think, probably one of the first times we realised just what a douche nozzle richard dawkins what, is what a dork Dawkins yeah. is. um yeah because this was back in 2011 what had had started this whole situation was uh, rebecca watson from skeptic and at the time skeptics guide to universe um had been uh, doing a, a talk at a, on a panel in dublin about uh, feminism in the atheist community and what it's like to be a science communicator and an atheist in uh, and a woman, yep. um, and at least her experience of it. Um, and she she did the talk. Uh, she had had kind of disagreed with some feminists on a panel about feminism and atheism earlier on, and and kind of gave her views. People agreed with her views in many cases, um, and she was in the bar until kind of four in the morning, and then said, "Look, everyone, I'm really tired. I'm going to go to bed." and headed to the elevator and a man who was there in the bar got into the elevator with her and kind of propositioned her basically uh having heard her say i'm really tired i'm going to go to bed yeah. he invited her to his hotel room for coffee and um she basically made a video saying you know it made me feel uncomfortable just guys don't do that 
That's not a cool yeah. way to behave. Yeah. She wasn't angry about it. She was just saying, look, I'd just given a talk about how sometimes people make me feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, and, and then this guy did this, and it's just not a cool way to behave. So don't, yeah. don't do that. Yeah, and you know, apart from the fact that you obviously didn't listen to a word I was saying. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and immediately she started getting attacked. Yeah. And one of the people that attacked her was Richard Dawkins, who was just unbelievably mean about it. Yeah. But um, but in a really weird way as well, because he made a post. I think it was a reply on Feringula. Right. Um, and he said, he wrote, Dear Muslima, stop whining, will you? Yes, yes, I know you had your genitals mutilated with a razor blade and yawn. Don't tell me yet again. I know you aren't allowed to drive a car and you can't leave the house without a male relative and your husband is allowed to beat you and you'll be stoned to death if you commit adultery. But stop whining, will you? Think of the suffering your poor American sisters have to put up with. So he's basically saying... Yeah. Rebecca Watson and bad. and basically yeah. women who are who, who are harassed don't have the right to complain about it yeah. because they don't have it as bad as people in the Middle East as women in the Middle East. Yeah, which is we, we, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's just, sickening. Yeah, is one yeah. way to say, and not yeah. least from coming from Richard Dawkins. You know, who you kind of think, well, actually, you know, he's, he was at one point up there with Christopher Hitchens in talking sensibly about how we've been um, duped for centuries about the God thing and uh -huh. puts cogent arguments together in a fairly sensitive and well constructed way to try and get a past the offence that it causes and actually get people to engage with proper premises and lead you to conclusions without any use of any fallacies in the way. Or if he is, he's very aware of where they come from. To say that, which is obviously written by a man in an elevator at 4am <laughs> anyway, yeah. it's that kind of, what the fuck? Yeah. yeah, it's it's aggressively missing the point. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And, I mean, he has, in more recent years, apologised for this specific thing he said. There's right. there's plenty of other stuff he said that he yeah. needs to apologise for that he hasn't. <laughs> yeah. But but he has said, you know, I, I shouldn't have said it in that way or responded in that way. That was not right. Um, he but, didn't do the... Um, if it I'm sorry. If um, it, yeah, no, he didn't do an I'm sorry offense. if it offended you. No, yeah, yeah. He, he did say I, you know, I was wrong to offense. say that. Right. Okay. Um, but still, I mean, not only was he wrong to say it, but but it is it, it's unacceptable to to tell people that they don't have a right to to their feelings because yeah, they're because what has happened to them or the situation they're in isn't yeah, yeah isn't yeah. as bad as it could possibly be. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And I mean, this will ha this happens in ev everybody who complains to anybody about something that's bad. The other per the person they're complaining to, can probably say, "Well, yeah. I've had a much worse day," or "Or I I can remember a time when I experienced something much worse than that." Yeah. Don't don't fucking do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, what about the Yemenis? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna play fake news, folks. I love the game. It's a great game. I understand the game as well as anybody. As well as anybody. Yes, it's time for Fake News, the game where I read out three Trump quotes, two of which are real and one I made up, and Mark has to figure out which one is fake news. And the, my current score? Is uh, 30 out of 65. You see, it could be much worse than it that. It could be. It could, could be, be a lot worse. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, but actually that's no defence because, <laughs> you know, I'm only just over pure chance. Could be better. <laughs> could, be, could be better, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. That's that's <laughs> reputation, isn't it? Oh well, again, yeah. No, but but what you yeah. did could be a lot better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I've gone back into the archives for this one. Yeah, and uh, and mined the comedy gold of uh, of the killing of Abu Bakr al Baghdadi. Oh, um, yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. I think it's uh, one of the several roses in Montreux, isn't it? <laughs> this one, yeah. Um, I think we we talked. We may have talked about this at the time, but. Um, right. Yeah, I thought at least there's you know, enough time has passed that you may have forgotten how I can't remember Trump solemnly announced this to oh, to the did, American public. Yeah, 
Well, it, it and, was uh, his Obama moment. It, it was, exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. This was when yeah. he really became president. And um, <laughs> yeah. so, uh, statement number one. I've been looking for Baghdadi since the start of my administration, and today we got him. He died. He's dead. A lot of other certain people that were there, too, are dead, but we didn't lose a single American life, not even a dog. I got to watch a lot of it from the Situation Room, and I don't want to go into detail, but it was a beautiful thing to see. He died like a coward, which is what he was. OK, other certain people that were there. <laughs> certain people, not, not uncertain people. <laughs> no, it's just like, yeah. Did we, but we didn't lose an American, not even a dog. Did they send dogs in? Did they just, like, parachute them in? <laughs> Shoot them in with a mortar? I don't know. Yeah. Statement number two. OK. <laughs> Baghdadi and the losers who worked for him, yeah. the losers they are, they had no idea what they were getting into. In some cases, they were very frightened puppies. There's the dog again. In other cases, they were hardcore killers, but they killed many, many people. Losers they are. Okay. And statement number right. three. Yeah. They did a lot of shooting and they did a lot of blasting, <laughs> even not going through the front door. You know, yeah. you would think you go through the door. If you're a normal person, you say, knock, knock, may I come in? The fact is that they blasted right. their way into the house in a very heavy wall, and it took them literally seconds. By the time those things went off, they had a beautiful big hole, and they ran in, and they got everybody by surprise. Well, not so much by surprise, because there's a fucking gopey hole being blasted <laughs> in the wall. You're going to have a sense of expectation there, aren't you? You're People gonna are going to look around at somewhat alerted, <laughs> yeah. And they go, oh, what? Yeah. Yeah, that's just made... That's just made a it's scene. like the Kool-Aid man, basically. Oh, yeah, <laughs> or the scene from Kick-Ass, where they just kind <laughs> yeah. of jump in, yeah, and they literally take by surprise. So they took them literally seconds. They did a lot, and they did a lot of blasting. So he's watched too many Star Wars movies. Even even not going through the front door. So, yeah, that... What the fuck? Bro, okay. Been looking for Back Daddy for that moment, yeah, and today we've got him. He died, he's dead. Okay, all right. No idea they were getting into some cases, they were very frightened puppies. Oh, so that's the people who worked from other cases, they were hardcore killers. Okay. Mm. Uh, well, big, a beautiful big hole sounds very Trump. Like a beautiful wall, big beautiful wall. So I quite like that one. Puppies, so frightened puppies, which is why I think you did the dog thing in the other one. Or it, did you do the puppies thing because you did the dog thing in the other one? Okay, okay, I'm gonna. Well, I'm gonna plump for puppies. So I think number. Number two is the one that you made up. Okay, so of the other two, which are you more convinced by? Uh, I, I, I don't know about convinced, but I would quite like to hear him say, <laughs> knock, knock, may I come in? <laughs> and then blast it in a big, beautiful hole, beautiful big hole. So okay. I, I think number three, I, I hope, my fingers are crossed, I hope that's real. Number three yeah. is yeah. real. Oh, They did a lot of shooting. And they did a lot of blasting, even not going through the front door. You know, you think you go through the door. If you're a normal person, you say, knock, knock, may I come in? Uh, the fact is that they blasted their way into uh, the house in a very heavy wall, and it took them literally seconds. By the time those things went off, they had a beautiful big hole, and they ran in, and they got everybody by surprise. So if, if you, if, does he not know what? Black ops do. They're not normal. <laughs> yeah. If you're a normal person going say, to assassinate someone, yeah. Who you say, speak knock, knock, English. may I come in? Yeah. <laughs> and you wouldn't even say knock, knock. You would knock yeah, on the door. Knock. Yeah, or you'd kick the door in. Yeah. And a heavy wall? Who who talks about a heavy wall? A thick wall? <laughs> you, you know, it's, it's, and it, by the time yeah. they think those things went off, what is he, what is he like? <laughs> It's just not, you know, it's just a sombre occasion. We've identified a guy as a bad guy. He's a bad guy, but nonetheless, I did have to authorise his killing, which is not a good thing. 
but I think you'll accept, as the American people, it was a danger to us. So it's one of the grimmest duties that I had to perform is to sanction the death yeah. of another human being. No, he not, went a different not direction. Say, not not how <laughs> come in. He you went... Think, he went the, the He went with standing, celebration and yeah. a little bit of a skit. And, <laughs> <laughs> he went a bit Bob Odenkirk, didn't he? You uh -huh. kind of like, yeah, a bit, of, a bit of Mr. Show going on there. Yeah. So uh, yeah. you also think number one is real? And uh, yeah. number one I'm not so sure. is fake news. Oh, nice one. See, the the brevity of the other one, it, yeah. it took me by surprise. See, the frightened puppies, good work. The frightened Putting puppies. Putting in the dog. I mean, well, yeah, which means he did say number two. He did say frightened puppies. Baghdadi and the losers who worked for him. And losers they are. They had no idea what they were getting into. In some cases, they were very frightened puppies. In other cases, they were hardcore killers. But they killed many, many people. I love that those are the two categories of, <laughs> oh, God, of Baghdadi's yeah. like, crew. Yeah. There were some hardcore killers, <laughs> some very frightened puppies. He's, it's like he's reading. It's like... <laughs> You remember that one where George W. was, he was reading a book upside down in a school. It's got like a massive, big, card, thick page book, kind of Dr. <laughs> mm -hmm. Zeus thing. That's what he's doing. Bang, Daddy and the Losers, who worked for him, <laughs> turn over the page and loses their idea. They had, they are. They had yeah. no idea. Some of them were frightened puppies. Yeah, but they were straight. And they turn it over, and others mm -hmm. were hardcore killers. They just had like, you know, teeth drawn in but they killed many many people so i'm explaining to a three-year-old why i had to sanction the murder of another human being do you want to know the weirdest thing yeah this was the scripted part of the speech no way <laughs> the bit no. where he talks about knock knock may i come in yeah. that was a kind of off the cuff answer to a reporter but the bit about no, the very frightened puppies was actually the reading was, it Jesus i don't i mean it made you know him he probably yeah. went off script even though he was supposed to be reading it but yeah, yeah. but that was in the prepared remarks the the no section. Way. so they're explaining to him as a three-year-old uh -huh. why <laughs> they've taken his name and gone and killed somebody <laughs> they go, yeah the losers they're losers mm. uh, and losers they are that must be one of his add-ins because he yeah. likes the idea that other people are losers they have no idea see they could they're pure they're completely unknowing saps that uh -huh. they work for him and they are some of the certain people that are dead <laughs> some, some cases they're very frightened puppies no what the fuck no that's why see i think the other one ridiculous though it is it's it's much more palatable, even though you made it up. Yeah, he died. He's dead. A lot of them are dead. We didn't lose a dog. Not even a dog. See, I'm, yeah, they I did the dog. Kind of want, yeah. To be fair, there yeah. was a dog. Oh no, um, uh, a very beautiful and talented dog, according right. to Trump. Of course, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> right. I've got an image of Lassie now. Yeah, <laughs> he was yeah. he was injured, oh. but but survived and was brought home. Wow. So what was the dog there? What was Lassie doing? What was his job? Uh, just, just, you know, just distract the bank. He said, Do you, this is, I mean, there's so many, as always with Trump, yeah. there are other sections I could have used. <laughs> and, and the yeah. bit where he talked about the dog, he said, um, it was, you know, the, they had a canine or as I call it, a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it was just, it was with them when they went in just, right. and chased El Baghdadi into a tunnel. Oh, okay. So, ah, it was a it was a chasing into a tunnel. Chasing, dog. yeah, tunnel right. dog, yeah. Which means, unfortunately, oh, that you man. did not get that correct. Uh, oh, so, so you go so down a, another percentage point. Less uncertain, still could uh, be down worse. Down to forty five percent, which you know still could be worse. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> By no possible idea could it be worse. And it's time for the part of the show that this week at least is called A Grand Jury is Not a Logical Fallacy because finally, while we were off, yeah. the Manhattan District Attorney, Cyrus Vance, 
has um, has convened a special grand jury, or at least the news came out yep. that a special grand jury has been uh, put together. Um, it's it's entirely possible. We don't know many of the details, um, but it's entirely possible this has actually already gone on for a little while, and we're just this is the first we're kind of hearing about it. And we don't even know if Trump is kind of the the target of this. Yeah. yeah. Um, we know that it's looking at Trump's organization. Yeah, it's, um, the, it's it, kind of the equivalent of Al Capone's tax evasion, isn't it? You know, I mean, we'll, maybe, we'll, we'll, but we'll, there's a lot of stuff that we'll they're looking of, at, potentially. Yeah, we won't get him for the, <laughs> the major thing of, you know, being, in, being, being the only decent performance in the untouchables. You know, <laughs> we won't get him for the main thing. We'll just kind of we'll try and get him on some other thing that we could, which is, has got some legal standing that he can't, get round yeah so in, in trump's case that's part of the part of the issue is that the political things that he's tried to be can i use the word impeach yeah <laughs> yes i can <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Impeach twice. twice on you know kind of unseemly conduct by a president you know the, the whole of the republican party going no that's perfectly seemly that's, <laughs> that's fine that's, yeah. a, that's a very Republican thing to do. And by Republican, we mean American. And that's fine. So you can't possibly sue him for that. We will support him every inch of the way. He has our 100% backing. So I mean, he is. Doesn't work. Um, Fulton County in Georgia are still looking at him for um, election fraud, basically. Ah, uh-huh. yeah. Um, when, he, when he called Secretary of State. Uh, Brad Raffensperger and and asked him to just write down a number that made him win in Georgia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Knowing full well that that wasn't the real number. Um, but but this is the one that's come up first. And yeah. so a grand jury, in general, is uh, is a group of people who get together and decide whether to uh, whether a case should go to court. Basically, whether criminal charges should be brought against someone. And they're given information by the prosecutor. The defence doesn't get a say in this, so that so the grand jury only hears from the prosecutors. And they hear basically all of the evidence that they the prosecutor has mm-hmm. that this person committed a crime or this right. organisation should be charged with a crime. Um, and normally a grand jury will meet for about a month and they'll hear multiple cases and they'll decide that, you know, which ones should should be charged and which ones shouldn't. Uh, this is a special grand jury, which means that they will just look at this case and they will meet for up to six months. Wow. And because there's, a, frankly, a lot of evidence that they have to look at. Yeah, there's <laughs> so lots of stuff to see um, through. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, the other thing, because this is a federal grand jury instead of a state grand jury, is they oh, aren't okay. allowed to present hearsay evidence. So right. they can't have the FBI agents and people like that come in and say, well, you know, we spoke to this guy and he said this. Yeah. They have to actually hear from the witnesses. Wow. Um, so they will submit um, subpoenas to various witnesses and bring them in who, who and ask them questions. Uh, and the jury, the grand jury, gets to ask questions as well. Um, which again isn't the case in a, in the trial uh, part, but um, so this is a is it's not a trial. It is a um, a presentation by the prosecutors to a group of up to twenty three, I think, New Yorkers. Um, and so are they are they like ordinary people or are they yeah, lawyers? Yeah, they're just or, citizens. Oh, okay, right. Yep, yep. Um, uh, so they will be presented with all of the evidence and and then. Basically, they will make the decision of whether yep. to charge or bring an indictment against wow. someone. Um, again, we don't know if Trump is is the target or a target, uh, but it's it's certainly in his wheelhouse. Right. It's in his area. Yeah. yeah. Um, because the things we do know... Got his name on it. Yeah. Yeah. The things we do know, obviously, are that Cyrus Vance has been investigating Trump's uh, taxes and things like that for a while now. Yeah. Uh, I think they, they got the... the Manhattan District Attorney's Office got Trump's tax returns, tax uh, accounts in yeah. February. The um, people that we know that they have spoken to already uh, are people like uh, Jennifer Weisselberg, mm-hmm. who is the former uh, daughter-in-law of Trump's uh, CFO, Trump uh, Trump Organization oh, CFO, right. Alan Weisselberg. Yeah. Um, she uh, is likely to be cooperative because right. she and um, 
Alan Weisselberg's son, Barry, had a very acrimonious divorce. Ah, uh-huh, um, right. And and she she got in the divorce somehow. I've got no idea how this works. Yeah. Several boxes of documents. Oh my god! That's um, brilliant. Which she has apparently handed over to the DA's office. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so that could be helpful. Yeah. Um, they have uh, they've subpoenaed Alan Moisselberg's probably suing um, his divorce lawyer right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They've, yeah. they've subpoenaed Alan Moisselberg's um, tax records and, and finance finances. Um, they've spoken to Michael Cohen oh, multiple right. times. Yeah. yeah, these people, Jennifer Weisselberg and, and Michael Cohen, we don't know if they've actually kind of testified uh, in in a, to the grand jury yet. One person we do know has testified is Jeff McConney, who is a senior vice president and controller of the Trump organization. Mm-hmm. He knows a lot about the numbers and the and the finances of the Trump organization. Right. The, some of the things that will stick are in the in the ball in the the same ballpark as the tax evasion stuff because didn't they apply for and get grants for buildings and stuff you know it's it's kind of it's yet more in the history of mad bankruptcy claims that we kind of know about that he's never that he's got away with that where they put in for grants based on evaluations of properties that were falsified yeah we know that we know that he made loan applications against properties and increased the value on the of the properties when Mm -hmm. asking for a loan against them yeah um, and decreased the value when, when um, doing his property them. taxes, yeah, yep. um, and we know that from Michael Cohen. We know it from public records that have been that yeah. have come out. And Certainly, some of those, we know it. The, the Scottish, yeah, golf we know it for, courses, for, yeah. for his for his Scottish golf course uh, yeah. and the ones in Ireland as well, because um, we've we've seen the data on those. Um, the in the UK, that is public record. What they claim the how successful they claim those golf courses were versus. Mm-hmm what he claimed how successful he claimed they were and how much he claimed they were worth when um you know paying his taxes yeah yeah there's a lot we don't know about this situation what we do know is that cyrus vance has um has said that he is retiring at the end of this year (laughs) right so it seems quite likely Mm -hmm. that that he's rush it through yeah he's gonna want to Mm. to press charges before he retires or yep. you know to get, be involved possibly in the case i don't know um but yeah it's something that that it's it's n- although it, it, i said it was up to six months that they can hear evidence hmm. um are at the point of it being up um a judge can extend that i think the jurors can vote to to kind of extend the period um right. so it oh, could okay. potentially go on longer but i think they're going to want to probably try and get this through before the end of the year but um but based on the people that we already know that they've spoken to and the evidence that we already know they have, um, it seems like they're probably going to... I, I mean, they uh, people have said, experts in this area have said, yep. you don't convene a special grand jury unless you have some, some evidence that someone committed a crime. Yeah. You know, this isn't yeah, just... This isn't a fact-finding yeah. mission. They yeah. have the facts. Yeah. They are, they are now presenting them to, uh, to people. Yeah, somebody I read that somebody commented on it and said the um, um, this would make the Harvey Weinstein case look like somebody with training wheels. <laughs> so you kind of you go, wow, there must be so. Yeah, much I mean, there's stuff. also, of course, there's the um, the charges that uh, Trump was an unindicted co-conspirator on yep. when Cohen was uh, was charged. Mm. Yeah. Um, Stormy Daniels has already said she's very happy to to yeah. uh, <laughs> get back you know, in the news. The, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, but if the uh, if the prosecutors want to want to talk to her, she will be forthcoming with any information she has, and she has receipts. Yeah. She has all of the the kind of the data <laughs> and the paperwork. Um, Quite interesting, isn't it? Because the that this possibly gives people uh, license to or the the safety within which they can just kind of go, yeah, you know all that stuff I was frightened to tell anyone before because I thought mm-hmm. I might die. I'm quite happy to tell you that now. So there is a um, it's a sense of that. But, yeah, certainly the fact that Michael Cohen has kind of been – he's back in the frame yeah. and kind of going, okay, yeah, we need to see you at least a dozen times <laughs> about this stuff. 
And the, the yeah. fact that they get people to testify uh, to the grand jury, one of the benefits of this is because it's it's secret, although there have been yeah. a couple of leaks that sound we know about this stuff. Yeah. Um, but um, the, they get people to kind of lock in their testimony without knowing what other people have said. Right. Um, so yeah. they can get people to kind of <clears throat> yeah. to, to say, to, to answer their questions without, uh, you know, it being in open court. Mm. And... Um, and also, Trump, uh, if Trump's lawyers believe that he um, is a target of this, which is yeah. possible, they can petition to to have him testify. You know, if they were stupid, yeah. Oh, let's. <laughs> they <hope>. could, but <laughs> but he won't. Yeah. You know, and if he is a target, he won't be kind of called to testify. There's no. They can't. They can't. They don't get the the person who they are trying to indict to. To, to come and go on the stand and, and answer questions. No, there's no requirement for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that, yes. Is there if anything, if the Buller case is, um, the Buller trial is anything to go by, then we know that all of Trump's advisors are going, no, do you know what? Yeah. You can't definitely, go. definitely. I can't must go. <laughs> I will go. And defend, no, no, no. Please, you can't. And then, yeah, as we learned delightfully in Woodward's book, that, you know, so. <laughs> Okay, let's just run through a scenario. Like <laughs> two questions in, he's already blowing up and saying, yeah. "How dare you!" Blah 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 blah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we don't know if this will end up uh, with charges against the Trump organization, yeah. Trump himself, members of his family, Weisselberg, or all of the above. Yeah. I'm hoping for that one. <laughs> yeah. And finally, some things we really don't have time to talk about. Facebook have announced that Trump's ban will last at least two years, at which point they'll check whether he's still a shitty white supremacist who casually commits stochastic terrorism before probably letting him back on. In the meantime, he can't even talk to his followers through his blog, because that didn't even last three Scaramucci's before he shut it down because nobody read it and people were laughing at him. If only Frank Speech was up and running. You know, the new social network from Lumpy Pillow Huckster, and no, I will not be clarifying that modifier, Mike Lindell. The man who looks like Hitler really let himself go. To be fair, Lindell has other things to think about right now. His lawyer, Alec Beck, just filed a lawsuit against voting machine companies Dominion and Smartmatic, at which point Beck's law firm immediately fired him for, you know, filing a bullshit lawsuit on behalf of a crazy person. <laughs> Meanwhile, said crazy person, who looks like Ned Flanders was turned into a real person by a witch's curse, but like an incompetent witch has convinced himself that not only does he have a cast-iron proof that the election was rigged, but that is so compelling the Supreme Court will agree to hear the case sometime in July and immediately vote unanimously to reinstate Trump as the true president. I'm guessing nobody's told Mikey that the Supreme Court are on hiatus from the end of June until October. Not to mention, that's not how the fucking Supreme Court works. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes the stuff's so compelling, you've got just got to go the hell with that <laughs> yeah <clears throat> as per bloody usual droopy the dog in sheep's clothing mitch mcconnell goes along with governmental procedure to soak up all the praise because he's wise and bipartisan and fair and all that and then at the last minute reveals himself to be an actual hound of the baskervilles a vote to set up an independent commission to investigate the january 6th capital riot received 54 yays and 35 nays Although he'd previously been open to the idea of a commission, Drew Pascoville had a change of heart. At first, he raised some concerns about the commission, which would have been split 5-5 between Republicans and Democratic appointees with shared subpoena power. Then, despite an amendment to address that, he just dropped the pretext and said that the commission and what it might uncover would be bad politics for the Republicans heading into the midterm. Despite this being a moment of unshielded honesty, he had to work pretty hard to whip fellow Republicans into making sure there were not enough votes to reach the 60 to end the debate, despite the 19-yay lead. Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, hinting he might bring the commission up again, said, This vote has made it official. Donald Trump's big lie has now fully enveloped the Republican Party. There you have it, folks. Democracy in action. Oh, no, sorry, that's one word there. Democracy in action. We have a new contender for stupidest member of Congress, yeah. and it's already a packed field, so anyone hoping to compete with Marjorie Taylor Greene, Lauren Boebert and Louis Gohmert really has their work cut out. 
So, up steps Mo Brooks, the GOP congressman for Alabama, who looks like a less charismatic Mike Pence. Mo was one of the assholes who helped incite the January 6th insurrection and for the past couple of months has been trying to avoid getting served with a lawsuit by Eric Swalwell. The private investigator Swalwell hired finally handed the papers to Mo's wife at their home and Mo decided to claim on Twitter that Swalwell's team illegally trespassed on his property, which is weird since he really didn't seem to have a problem with trespass just a few months ago. Anyway, to really drive his point home, Mo included an image of the section of the Alabama Penal Code concerning trespass. But rather than take a screenshot like anyone who isn't 75, he took a photo of his laptop screen like a fucking maniac and posted that, along with a clear image of his Gmail password, which he keeps taped under the screen. (laughs) No, it should be noted, sits on the House's Cyber Innovative Technologies and Information Systems Subcommittee. Brilliant. I sent an email from his (laughs) Gmail account (laughs) to say, yes, it was me what done it. (laughs) Yeah, lots of love, Mo. (laughs) <laughs> Rabid Florida Republican Ron DeSantis has signed a law which insists that social media companies give an equal platform to everyone. Racists, hate speech shouters, riot inciters, child pornographers, ex-presidents, or all of the above. Or face fines of a quarter of a million dollars a day. Also, they can't refuse to run a story on the basis that it's fake news if it comes from a broadcast network news source. You know, like Fox News or OAN. This is, of course, because Republicans feel right-wing voices have been censored on social media. No, it's just a lot of unpalatable right-wing voices are racists, hate speech, right inciting, child pornographers, etc. And DeSantis added... Many in our state have experienced censorship and other tyrannical behaviour firsthand in Cuba and Venezuela, thus neatly playing the communist card, whilst skipping over the usual immigration card. Oddly, an exception written into the law means it doesn't apply if the company runs a theme park. No, me neither. Are they perceived in DeSantis's 1950s son addled brain as ancient disney bastions of free speech? Zuckerland, here we come. Plummet down the like flume. Ride the big blue bird at Twitter world. Fight the YouTubers in a showdown at Copyright Strike Saloon. As always, simply follow the money and you'll find it's so that the right-wing online media organisations can, of course, censor anyone they deem to be left-leaning slash disagree with them because somewhere in their portfolio they've links to companies that sell cotton candy at a daily Main Street parade in real life, or what passes for real life in theme park America. Republicans are experiencing a bit of cognitive dissonance at the moment, actually for the last five years or so. You see, 600,000 Americans have died from a disease they're pretty sure either doesn't exist or was created in a lab by the Chinese or both. Trump was president for most of that, but he's always right and good and strong, so it must have been Anthony Fauci who's to blame. A bunch of Dr Fauci's emails from 2020 were released following a FOIA request and they are apparently all smoking guns that prove Fauci basically killed all those people himself despite the fact that what they actually show is that Fauci was saying the same things in private that he was saying in public at the time. There are three main emails that nutters have seized on. One from February 2020 has Fauci telling a former HHS official that masks weren't recommended unless you're sick, which was what scientists thought at the time before they learned more stuff. The second was one endorsing the general idea that it would be good if Facebook did something about all the misinformation going around, which I actually can't even figure out what's wrong with that. And finally, an email where Fauci was made aware of the slight possibility that if you squint in just the right light, it looked like COVID might look a bit man-made, a theory which was conclusively disproved less than a month later. The fact Fauci didn't publicly announce it's a bioweapon somehow proves he was covering for his Chinese overlords, or employees, depending on which conspiracy you believe. My favourite is his April 8th reply to a Chinese health official who expressed concern for Fauci who'd been getting death threats from Trump supporters. He simply replied, all is well, despite some crazy people in this world. (laughs) We love Fauci. In March 1966, John Lennon stated that the Beatles were more popular than Jesus, quite accurately observed among the young people of Britain, as it turned out. But not shy of turning to violence to protect the saviour, former Beatles fans in the US greeted their tour that summer with death threats, merch burnings and torch-lit protests by strangely pointy-hooded, moderate, white, Protestant, God-fearing folk. 
Fast forward 55 years and a new survey by the Public Religion Research Institute and the Interfaith Youth Corps finds those who believe in the principles of QAnon, i.e. that the levers of power are controlled by a cabal of Satan-worshipping paedophiles and that it's true that American patriots may have to resort to violence to depose said paedophiles and restore the country's rightful order, now top around 30 million souls. Robbie Jones, the Research Institute's founder, pointed out if it were a religion, it would be as big as all white evangelical Protestants or all white mainline Protestants. So it lines up there with a major religious group. Of course, Robbie's been shot down as a freak across all the right wing press. Stacks of QAnon flags, t shirts, and banners are burning in the streets. The horned shaman has been denounced as an insurrectionist, and the whole movement has been deemed dangerous both to the young and to the very foundations of US society. No, no, it hasn't. Weirdly, OAN, Fox News, Newsmax, and actual elected members of the Republican Party all have an audience willing to pay their wages, so no one's going to let something irritating like a moral compass get in the way of that. Thousands of QAnon supporters got together in Dallas at the end of May for a three-day event called Forgotten Country Patriot Roundup. The organiser of the event, John Sabal, known online as QAnon John, claimed it wasn't a QAnon event, but he must have forgotten to tell the design team since the event logo that was on screen basically the whole time included the Where We Go On We Go All slogan. Speakers included pointy traitor Michael Flynn, who was asked by a member of the audience why what happened in Myanmar couldn't happen in the US, at which point the former US Army Lieutenant General called for a coup against his own government, saying, no reason, it should happen here which went down pretty well with the Patriots in the audience. Also appearing was Trump's former lawyer, Sidney Powell, whose existence only really makes sense if she's actually two kids in a trench coat pretending to be a lawyer. She claimed that Trump can simply be reinstated, but was careful to warn the drooling goons that he wouldn't get credit for time lost, but he'd definitely get the remainder of his term. Which is weird. If you're just making shit up, why not say he'll get the full four years? I don't know if he's been convinced by Sidney or Mike Lindell, but Trump has been telling people around him that he expects to be reinstated by August. Of course, it's possible that he's just mixed up reinstated and indicted. And jailed. <laughs> <laughs> Over here in the sunny uplands of Albion, it's been a month when numbers of deaths because of Covid weren't collated one day because of a public holiday. And there was much trumpeting in the media of the fact that zero deaths were reported that day. No trumpeting of the fact that next day there were 12 and then 18 and then 11 and then 13. Worried that we might have forgotten all about him, Machiavellian former advisor to the Prime Minister Dominic Cummings agreed to be scrutinised slash televised for seven hours by a government investigative committee, a thing he'd hitherto said was pointless and told opaquely rambling lies about the liars running the country. He'd hitherto been right. It was pointless. We didn't believe anything he said. These were lies about liars we already knew. And yet, as a nation, we've been complicit in doing nothing about, except for voting them liars in some more. In order to distract from the constantly lying liars, the real Prime Minister got secretly married to her liar boyfriend, Boris Johnson. Not so very secret, as pictures of the bankrupt gold digger Carrie marrying living off the state Turkish immigrant stock Boris, looking like Wurzel Gummidge and Aunt Sally, made all the media outlets. Matt Hancock went on TV and promised things based on no medical evidence, got called out for doing so a day later, then retracted everything a few days after that, reports of which were buried under the next set of promises and U-turns. That's not particularly this week, that's the shape of every week. Oh, and since we've sent all our holiday makers to Portugal as the one destination from which they didn't have to quarantine on returning, it's now no longer on the green list, so they'll have to quarantine because we don't want the Delta virus variant they took out there to come back in here. How did it get here in the first place for them to take? When we have taken back control of our borders, you say? Like Batman in that meme, I simply slap your face in reply. So that's all the bad arguments and faulty reasoning we have time for this week. You'll find the show notes at fallaciousTrump.com and if you hear Trump say something stupid and want to ask if it's a fallacy, our contact details are on the contact page. If you think we've used a fallacy ourselves, let us know. And if you've had a good time, please give us a review on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher or wherever you get your podcasts. And you can support the show at patreon.com slash ftrump, just like our newest patrons, Max Beaver, Lockheel K, Mark Bedillion, 
and Kelly Barrera. Our straw man level patrons, Kaz Tui, Steve Bickle, Schmutz, Mark Reiki and Amber R. Buchanan. And our top true Scotsman level patron, Lauren. Thank you so much, everyone. We really do appreciate your support. Yay, Lauren's back. And welcome Yay. welcome to Lauren and all of our new patrons. That's no, brilliant. thank you so much. You can connect with those awesome people as well as us and other listeners in the Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash fallacious trump. All music is by the Outbursts and was used with permission. So until next time on Fallacious Trump, we'll leave the last word to the Donald. That's right. Go home to mommy. Bye. Bye. <laughs>